So uh, welcome to our session. Um, we, we're going to talk about SLOs at Polar Signals and how kind of reality sometimes conflicts with, um, with our ideals for these kinds of things. So um, I'm Frederick. I'm the founder of Polar Signals. And uh, basically everything in the intersection of Kubernetes and Prometheus has been kind of the thing that I've been working on for the last uh, five to six years. So I'm the tech lead for uh, the special interest group for instrumentation within Kubernetes. I'm a Prometheus maintainer, Thanos maintainer, creative, creator of uh, Conprof, one of the two creators of uh, Prometheus operator and Kube Prometheus. So basically everything in that intersection, as I said, kind of has my fingerprints on it. Um, so yeah, that's me. Yeah, and that's also how I got to learn uh or meet Frederick, um, and yeah, since become a maintainer of Prometheus operator Q Prometheus, and then um, kind of like early on started uh, uh, contributing to Comprof, and we also both are uh, maintainers of Thanos. And uh, yeah, I'm also an organizer of the Prometheus Berlin meetup. All right, cool, let's get to it. Uh, so yeah, um, service level objectives. Um, <clears throat> we're kind of an, uh, like a, an observability SaaS uh, startup, you could say. Um, so for us, uh, basically, uh, we needed to think about what do our users care most about, right? So um, for us, it's really, next slide, um, when people um, interact with our service, there are kind of two to three things. Um, we, people, users write data to it and they read it back. Um, and that reading back typically happens through, through our single page app front end. And so when we think about this, uh, we also needed to think about what do our users care most about or like when is the service not satisfactory anymore um, in terms of kind of availability. And so we came to the conclusion that if um, our writes uh, were not very, very reliable, then that's much worse than reading not working, right? Um, kind of people start to lose trust when we lose data. Um, and so that's something that we prioritized very heavily from the very start and reading while we still wanted to be um, uh, very good, we can uh, live with, with that trade-off of reading sometimes not being quite as available um, as writing. And so that's kind of how we've thought about this from the very start. So next slide. Um, we, we kind of also thought about like, what is what is the ideal state for all of this, right? Uh, ideally, we would have our read API, our write API um, instrumented in our backing services um, with error rates and latencies. Um, and our front end is really just a single page app, right? So we only need to make sure that it's actually being served. So we can do that with external probes um, to, and to ensure that our users, uh, just like our users would be accessing this um, is actually working. And so, out of that, we can kind of derive our ideal SLOs. Again, we're as an early stage startup. We have uh, kind of limited resources. And so we needed to be reasonable about the things that we wanted to do. But as I said before, um, rights are uh, very much prioritized for us that we never lose any data, that we always um, hopefully successfully uh, accept your write requests and actually write to our backing storage. Um, and as I said, reading um, can be uh, can be a trade-off for us. So we chose kind of 99.5% for writes and 95% uh, for reads. So next slide. The problem though is, um, as I said, we're an early stage startup and we kind of move really fast. And so we needed to start somewhere. And so that somewhere wasn't necessarily that ideal state of um, we have all of our backing services perfectly instrumented. And while that is the case now, um, it's not how we started. And so what we started with is uh, just look at what are the metrics that we already have, right? And uh, we kind of came to the conclusion we're, we're already running Nginx, right? Um, so we can just grab those metrics from our Nginx kind of this sort of works with any um, like load balancer infrastructure, whether you're on GCP, whether you're on Kubernetes, um, on AWS, all of your uh, kind of load balancers have these kinds of metrics. And we happen to be maintainers of the Kube Prometheus stack, so we use that, which actually gives us all of these things that you can see here out of the box. Um, and for uh, probes, we also have a mechanism in the Prometheus community how to do that. So that was easy enough as well. We didn't need, any, need to build anything special. Uh, so that's kind of where we started with. Um, and we took these metrics and we started um, like anyone started creating our first kind of 
alerting rules. So next slide. Um, with the probe, um, actually, this is what we still have in production today. We just have a for statement that if this um, address is not accessible for 15 minutes at a time, we page someone. Um, however, for errors, we kind of started with this error rate of 5%, right? When you have 5% errors, um, alert us. And um, you're at SLOCOM, you probably already know what's coming. Um, this is not particularly great. It may be an okay start, um, but um, it tends to get noisy really quickly. And so the kind of canonical solution to this is um, that, um, yeah, this is not good enough. And so we need uh, multi-window, multi-burn rate alerts. So not just uh, are we alerting on that uh, individual spike that happens at one point in time, we actually um, look at multiple windows of error rates and only if multiple overlapping windows are um, indicating that uh, we are um, erroring too much um, over our entire kind of error budget window, um, should we be alerting? And so that's where we started and Matthias is gonna tell us how. Exactly, so how do we do this with Prometheus is kind of the question um, going forward, right? Um, we have like these like low level building blocks and we kind of know how to alert on like just like 5% or something, but yeah, how do we do like multi-error burn rates? Um, so essentially we can write all of this by hand. Um, and I think that's how I also started out um, for the first time, like implementing an SLO um, with Prometheus. So essentially, um, just open text editor, open the YAML file, and then just multi um, multi cursor, um, yeah, like editing um, and copy pasting a bunch of these uh, recording rules. So you can see we need a burn rate for five minutes, for thirty minutes, and then I think in total it's six um, up until three days. Um, and yeah, it's it works fairly fairly well with um, multi multi cursor editing, um, but we also kind of need the same for for the error. Um, the error budget burn alert. Um, so we kind of like, like just have tons and tons of repetition and we can we can probably use some automation for that, right? So really um, because of that, we came up with the SLO Libsonet, um, yeah, just config helper library. So like Libsonet is just a library for JSONet. Um, and because of that repetition, I think it's, it, it still is a really great um, way of, of describing these. And we can have these like higher level um, objects describing our SLO. So we just say um, 0 0.95 is the target of our SLO. We have this metric and then the selectors for for the um, yeah for the for the actual service. And then um, we can put that um, that object right here in the in the first um, part we we actually move this into, or we give it as parameter into this error burn function. And what we get back are the generated recording rules and alerts, which we then can use um, further on. Um, and that's that's also what we do, but if you aren't like super interested or involved with JSONet, um, there's also a website called, called promptools.dev um, where you can essentially just put in um, the target, um, the availability target, the metric, and, and some selectors small uh, or just like a few uh, more options um, in the advanced section and then you can generate this. You can copy paste it, but again, you need to like always copy paste, make sure it like stays the same. So personally, we still um, use uh, the SLO libs on a library and then the vote um, everywhere. And that's it. Um, that's how we got started with uh, SLOs at uh, Polar Signals and we can still improve on all, uh, a few things um, which we are going to do in the future um, and probably going to write blog posts along the way. So, yeah, stay tuned and um, enjoy SLOConf. Thank you for having us. Thanks, everyone.